Um, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Andrew, Andrew Volosiuk. Uh, I'm, a, I'm just a special data engineer at Contra.io. And uh, I have a little background uh, with uh, remote sensing, especially for forest management. Uh, but now I'm working like a data engineer. I like ads, I like MEMS, I like open data and uh, open software. And uh, today I'm going to mix some of this topic to make my presentation more funny. Yeah, and also today I'm going to present uh, our uh, open source uh, framework for data pipeline buildings. Uh, we named it Geosynt. It's like board game from uh, from Russian. It's like a, a flower hyacinth. Yeah, and we mix it with Geo because it's a pipeline for producing Geo data, and it it pronounced like Geosynt. Uh, yeah, world around of us is a world of data. I think we all know about it. And uh, that's why we love data and working with it so much. And especially open data and uh, open software for, for it. <laughs> and also, also we love uh, MEMAS and it's world of MEMAS. Uh, but let me say a little bit about my company and uh, about the uh, main topic that we are focusing in our work. Uh, Contour specializes in disaster management and uh, geoinformation. Uh, we develop custom solutions for different companies around the world. We create platforms for disaster management, for rapid decision making. Also, we develop a system for uh, uh, coordination in disaster management. Uh, we also help our client to track events in real time. We have disaster feed with uh, disasters across the world from very different uh, sources, like from private, like uh, Pacific Disaster Center in Hawaii, and uh, from open, like GDAX, or, um, or any small providers. Uh, also, we help estimate risk and impact. Uh, two hours ago, my colleague from Contour, Vasily, he was presented Disaster Ninja. It's our critical event management platform, and uh, he told a bit about, uh, about our work. Uh, some moments that I will present will duplicate here, but I will try to go a little deeper. Uh, we also help uh, our client to get not notified about changes in, uh, in the course of event, uh, keep uh, situation awareness on the very good level, and uh, to take action based on multiple criteria. Yeah, so what is Geosynth? Uh, Geosynth is an uh, open source, make-based, uh, make make-file-based uh, geodata ETL pipeline, extract, transform, load. Uh, Geosynth was initially designed uh, for internal contour needs. We used it for a few years, uh, and after a few years of usage inside of our team, and after a few projects, uh, uh, some of them was public, like uh, we built a, a geospatial data pipeline for map action. Maybe you're familiar with this organization. Uh, we decided to public it under MIT license. Yeah, and uh, at uh, Contour, uh, uh, we run a data pipeline on multiple servers uh, on schedule every day to download and process uh, uh, data from OpenStreetMap, like a uh, full dump of OpenStreetMap, and very various different data sets like uh, HRSL, GHS, uh, Wikidata, some data from them, and uh, rebuild our data set that we produce, Contour Population data set and Contour Boundaries and data for Disaster Ninja. It's uh, our uh, disaster management platform. Uh, uh, yeah, w w we use Geosynth especially to build data sets. Uh, we have two, two open data sets that we public for free, uh, publish for free. It's a population data set and uh, administrative boundaries. Uh, uh, our population data set, uh, actual version five, uh, we build it in, uh, uh, on H3 grid uh, system, uh, and uh, it's available for free on eight resolution for entire world on humanitarian data exchange. 
We also load uh, uh, downsized version in three kilometers and 22 kilometers. You also can download it for free. And uh, uh, from version three, we published uh, uh, small files with extraction per any country. So now you don't, uh, don't need to more download a big data set for entire world and extract data for a particular country. You can download its extraction. Uh, yeah, and uh, just to Ninja, it's, uh, as I mentioned before, is our critical event management solution. Uh, we developed it together with the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. It's open source and it's free. Uh, this tool provides information about recent natural disasters and visualizes mapping gaps. We have a lot of layers that uh, demonstrate uh, quality of coverage on OpenStreetMap, like uh, OpenStreetMap building completeness, uh, road completeness, antiquity. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so um, the mapping coordinators from humanitarian OpenStreetMap team can connect with local mappers to estimate those gaps because we have layers with uh, local mappers. We uh, collect data about OpenStreetMap users and uh, uh, create, a, uh, create a layer where, uh, where the most active users can be founded. And if you are an activator from humanitarian OpenStreetMap team and you want to find a guy who can update uh, uh, a local map because uh, he, he knows a local situation, you can go and check this layer and you will directly uh, find the guys who is local and who can map this for you if you will connect. Uh, yeah, and in a few words, it streamlines the process of mapping a uh, uh, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team activation when disaster strikes. Yeah, and uh, uh, the, the last tool for which we use Geosynt, uh, we have on our platform the varied layers. It's a special kind of layers where you can uh, join uh, four indicators. Uh, uh, the good example is uh, building quantity, uh, or building completeness. Uh, when on one axis we have uh, a relation between uh, number of buildings that mapped in OpenStreetMap with uh, buildings from uh, AI estimations, very different AI estimation. We collect uh, a lot of very different data sets and merge them uh, and uh, make a quality check. And we compare data from OpenStreetMap to define places where the, not all buildings mapped. And by uh, another axis, you can, uh, uh, yeah, there, there, I'm sorry, there is a building axis and uh, there is an axis with population. Population density, uh, and uh, uh, we did it to highlight places where there are a lot of people and uh, you have a very small completeness. Because uh, 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 for, for, for disaster management goals, it's most important uh, parts of uh, mapping. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was our solutions uh, uh, for which we produce data with using Geosynth. And let's, let's talk about Geosynth directly. Uh, though, uh, thus our products as a, uh, as a whole have defined a set of care requirements uh, for the software that we developed, like simplicity, reproducibility, uh, low entry barrier, easy and rapid prototyping from the start point to ready-made map, and uh, high single node uh, performance. Yeah, and uh, the main priorities during uh, system design was uh, uh, like simplicity and uh, reproducibility. So uh, losing your database shouldn't be a problem. You just should recreate database and uh, pipeline will rebuild every data that you had. Uh, we keep uh, uh, followed this uh, approach, so every layer that we have on Disaster Ninja, any data that we have in our, in our system can be rebuilt without any losses. Uh, yeah, about low entry barrier, uh, most of JS engineers uh, know SQL well, and uh, Geosynth uh, gives uh, your ability to easily run powerful post-JS uh, queries. And uh, uh, we, we also did uh, deep uh, Git integration. 
uh, to effectively collaborate inside of our team to be able to use AI tools to check our quality of our code and uh, fast, uh, to, to, to be able to fastly uh, uh, change uh, version of our, of our pipeline uh, from different branch. Yeah, and uh, a few words about uh, Stack. Uh, we, we, we collect uh, uh, open source uh, packages that we use uh, for processing geospatial data. It was uh, based on GNU Make, uh, and uh, 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 Make Profiler is a, is a linter and preprocessor for Make files, and uh, we use uh, GNU Parallel for parallel operation, GDAL, OGR, OSMC tools, Osmium for OSM uh, data processing, and uh, 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 PostgreSQL plus PostGIS and HTTPG to make uh, data transformation, uh, tr uh, transformation and uh, 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 all calculation inside of database. As you see, all this data, all, 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 all these packages in open source. Yeah, and uh, we are mainly focusing on uh, PostgreSQL, PostGIS, and H3PG. In our team, we have a contributor who write to PostgreSQL and PostGIS. Also, we have a contribution to H3PG, so we actively support uh, a software that we are using in our work. And uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that package allows you to combine powerful data processing feature of Postgres with efficient uh, geometric operation from PostGIS and uh, key benefits of using the H3 grid system. And uh, uh, H3 is, uh, uh, I, I think uh, most of us are very common with H3 and it uh, allows minimize distortion near the poles, uh, compact format to store and high performance lockups. And the main concept why we use it uh, we use it to join very different data sets uh, on one base. We transform them to H3 grid system, and after that you can compare it, you can uh, 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 try to do from them something, um, something most interesting. H3 grid system is very useful because uh, it's, it's not a vector format, it's not a raster format. When you want to have a vector, you have a vector, when you, hold, uh, when you want to have a raster, you use H3 grid system as a raster. And uh, this is the reason why we use this hexagonal system for Disaster Ninja, why we build our depopulation data set based on it. Uh, yeah, uh, Geosynth consists of uh, two open source repositories, the Geosynth Runner and Geosynth OpenStreetMap. Geosynth Runner is like a core part with, uh, install, uh, with uh, install scripts, uh, and uh, GeoCitum OpenStreetMap, it's an uh, open repository where we uh, give us an example of a small pipeline that will dump uh, OpenStreetMap uh, planet uh, and uh, will uh, process and load it to database. Uh, so uh, uh, after that, we, uh, you will be able to pr uh, process data from OpenStreetMap inside of Postgres. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, as this was mentioned before, uh, Geosynth based on make file. So the, the, the minimal logical block of the ETL process is a target. And uh, why is it easy? Because you can uh, migrate your bash scripts, your shell commands to make file almost without changes. It, 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 if, uh, only if you have uh, very special cases, like you have a dollar scene in your command, you should duplicate it. But in all uh, any cases, you can just uh, take it, uh, split into a lo small logical block, uh, transform it to target, and you will have a ma uh, make pipeline that will allows you to uh, uh, pr pr produce your data or any other operation that you want. And uh, as was mentioned before, you can easily use the magic of PostGIS without using any, any operators like in, uh, in big uh, uh, data pipeline building tools. You can just take your request, uh, SQL uh, request, and uh, put into your target. It will work. It will work fine. 
in our in our prod system we have uh, near like uh, five suns and uh, uh, lines and it work stable and efficient we checked yeah and uh, the very logical question that I have heard a lot why not uh, Python based uh, and uh, Almost everybody in JS community made the situation when you try to do something new, try to uh, pr pr produce data that you haven't ever produced before, and you are looking for the guide, and finally you found this guide, and it looks pretty, pretty nice. But when you load your Jupyter and start to do this, uh, you, uh, you, you met with a situation when uh, some function is outdated, new version of libraries that you have required it uh, installation something like a, a, a virtual environment so this is this is the reason why we try to avoid uh, uh, using a lot of python and uh, we based on make file yeah and uh, key, key, key advantage that uh, make file allows you to easily process uh, intermediate states when you have a very, very long uh, data processing pipeline and something uh, fall in the middle, you can start from the place where it fall. You exactly know why and where. You don't want to start from the, from the first uh, point. Just, just, just a funny meme about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and uh, some, some not very obvious advantages, but uh, okay, uh, when, when you have a pipeline that will work like uh, one, one day or two days, and in the middle of the work of this pipeline, you decide to change something. For example, name of your variable, or try a different approach to build data, you can stop pipeline right there, and uh, all target that were built will keep build, build and you can uh, switch your branch to new branch with new code and uh, you can uh, uh, re resume your pipeline from this point, not from start. It's, it, it, it's very useful because at the, at the start of our, of our prod pipeline we have uh, loading OSM data to post, post, Postgres uh, database. It took like a few hours, so we don't want to uh, duplicate it. Yeah, also, also we have a dash, dashboard, <laughs> if, if, if you want especially. The, it, it allows you to track pipeline execution, progress, and uh, time statistics. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, K-Utility that we use to manage all this is make profiler. It's, it, it's Python-based uh, uh, linter and preprocessor for make file that output a network diagram like you see there. It's, it's a real network di diagram from Make Profiler. In Prod we have it's uh, much more huge, but uh, it's it just for demonstration. And the uh, output chart allows you to see what went wrong and we quickly, quickly get to the logs. You can just uh, click on the target and uh, see the logs with errors. And uh, uh, we also have an option for Slack integration. Uh, uh, integration allows you to send message about K pipelines execution steps or bug reports directly to a Slack channel, so you need, you need to check the lo don't need to check the logs on the server. You can go to your, to your Slack channel and uh, just read. It's, it's, it's an example about messages. Uh, uh, Slack integration is an optional feature, so you can use Geosynt pipeline without it or integrate any different uh, messenger. Uh, but from our experience, uh, I can say that the most useful part of such kind of integration is that you can receive a report with K dataset metrics without going to the database or any management tools. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, pr uh, we produce uh, a control population dataset for entire world. And uh, we have uh, a lot of quality checks, and some of these quality checks send message to our Slack channel. And so, sometimes uh, it's a, it's, it sends us message that uh, uh, the Bender's dream came true, and now world population is zero. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, the, the, the final step, uh, uh, let's say hello world. Yeah, thank you. 
for, 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 for this, you just should check if Phosphor G2024 Europe is true. And yes, it's true, so hello world. Uh, yeah, this is the link uh, and QR code directly to the Geosynt runner. It's a core part where you can find the guideline, how to install. Uh, you also can uh, make your uh, pull request if you want. Uh, this is the sources and uh, final parts. I brought my memes, so I want your question. <laughs> All right, so who has questions about kitten memes? <laughs> more kittens, more <laughs> geospatial. Mm, yeah. The sessions after lunch are always a bit tricky, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, may maybe one important moment that I missed. Uh, uh, the, uh, there, there is open source, a ready-made sort of part, uh, especially that was built for map, for map action, so you can take it and uh, uh, try uh, with, uh, without writing your own pipeline, how it works. Yeah. I have questions, but it's mostly about the data, not so much about the pipeline, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Uh, are these data sets special based on H3 uh, publicly available? Did uh, I? Uh, a publicly available control population on eight resolution for entire world, publicly available uh, contour boundaries data sets, it's, it's not uh, H3, it's, it, it's just geometry of boundaries. Uh, any, any other data sets, they available on Disaster Ninja. You, you cannot download it, but you can use. You can use them, okay. On the... Folks, another opportunity? Yeah, and uh, in, in, in few months we are going to launch our, our commercial version of Disaster Ninja without focusing on disasters. Mm -hmm. And but we will have uh, additional notification about that. Okay, let's let's look at. Uh, we have time. Um, so another question about H three, yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, how approachable did you find it? Can you do all your work only based on the H three API, or did you have to code uh, something extra to to get that data into your system, or to get data into the H three grid? Uh, it very depends on, uh, on the nature of your data, which kind of data you use. So for some data sets, we just convert a, uh, a point geometry to H3 index. For some of them, uh, we use intersection with geometry of hexagons. Uh, it's, 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 it really depends on data mm -hmm. and sense that you have in this data. Okay. Anybody? No. So now a question more about the pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like make, but it's a, th there is, let's say, let's call it, it's a learning curve. It's not so much a learning curve. For someone, for instance, that is not used to Linux or someone that didn't start yeah. working on Linux uh, over 20 years ago like I did. Yeah. Do you get feedback from users uh, about uh, this particular setup with Make, do, do are users happy with this? Uh, if you don't mind the question, they 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 happy, but uh, as as it was published uh, recently, they still have some question. But it's 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 like working moment. Uh, yeah, uh, make it's it's very useful for Unix-based system, and uh, you will have some pain if you will try to do it on Windows, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But what I can say about that, uh, I'm from Windows initially. I did my uh, thesis uh, uh, on Windows, and I used uh, Python libraries to process uh, remote sensing data. It was pain, <laughs> especially for me. It's it's my uh, uh, experience from the past. So now, uh, after migration to the Linux, uh, I feel much more better. I can use anything that uh, guys uh, write and process. Okay, I think that's a good a good moment to end yeah. <laughs> with those words on on migrating from Windows to Linux, um, unless there is 
some more, something to say from the audience? Okay, let's leave yeah, okay. it here. Well, Thank you, Andre.